Buddy boy. It's okay. Let's it's see your boy. eyes. Buddy boy. Buddy look. Whoa. Whoa, buddy boy. <laughs> buddy boy. Wow, buddy boy with the, the multiple colored eyes. <laughs> Reno. Yep. You're just crossing the street and you wave to me. Yep. We've met before in Hollywood. Yes. And you subscribe <laughs> to Invisible People. Yep. Well, thank you for saying hello. Of course. You're still outside. Yes. Tell me about it. Okay, so it's here. My brother was born a year before me with cerebral palsy, and my mom couldn't take care of him, so she had her sister adopt him. Um, and then when I was about nine, almost ten, my mom had a daughter with another guy who used to beat me. Um, and you said even at seven, you did. They took you away. Yeah. Child protective services. Yeah, they for took a while. me away for about a year. Right. My mom got me back. Um, let's see here. Um, when I, I was getting into a lot of trouble, stealing from people and everything, even right. family members. But you were saying when you're at ten, your dad got out of jail. Right. Yeah. And. Um, I moved in with my dad because I was getting in trouble stealing from everybody and uh, my dad was like hey I'm still smoking weed you can s here's the weed you can smoke it if you want here's the porn you can look at it if you want at 10 years old at 10 um, my goodness. within a couple of months I had gotten arrested at school for possession of marijuana on school campus um, and got and that back. was years ago when marijuana was Illegal. Illegal. Yeah, and I was buddy. in Tucson, Arizona, too, at the time. So. Yeah, and being a kid, you know, uh, 10 years old. Yeah, marijuana is not for 10-year-olds, you know. So um, your upbringing was not good. Right. Um, I started getting arrested for possession of marijuana and then got put on probation <laughs> your dog hold on <laughs> your dog we don't edit these but your dog is wrapping around the the monopod <laughs> so you're you're going in and out of juvie yeah um they put me on probation on uh, intensive probation because i kept getting arrested for possession of marijuana or dropping dirty for marijuana um and then uh one day when i was 15 my brother was 16 uh, my uncle came over to the house and he never came over to the house so I knew there was something up you know and he told me that my brother had passed away during the night I'm sorry and uh, at first I didn't I thought everybody was playing a trick on me and we went to the viewing that weekend and when I seen his body in the casket I looked like he was breathing and I immediately started crying and that kind of was what screwed me up the most you know um, I, I remember being in a funeral when I was young and I didn't understand it and I freaked out right um, I was in and out of rehab um, and um, they'd put me in a military school for a little bit for bad kids um, I think I was 17 and I still hadn't graduated, or I haven't even passed ninth grade yet. And so, you were, you're, you're telling me earlier, you did treatment mostly as... Uh, as a minor, yeah. As a minor, but yeah. it never worked. Never worked. And they, they it just progressed, honestly. Yeah. Um, when I was 17, I got my GD while I was locked up. And when I got out, I had signed up for the FAFSA. I got my classes set up at Pima Community College in Pima County, Tucson, Arizona. And um, I was gonna study um, business management and metalwork because I wanted to own my own business, making and selling jewelry. And my mom wanted me to go to Job Corps and I didn't want to go to Job Corps, so she kicked me out on the street. And um, I've been pretty much on the streets ever since. There's been a couple times where I've gotten off the street. Um, I had gotten married for a couple years and had a set of Irish twins 
Um, my son was born on March 11, 2011, and my daughter was born March 9, 2012. Um, it was about May 12th of 2012 when I ended up going to jail for some old warrants that I had had. And while I was locked up, I was locked up for like 12 days. And um, my wife left me. She got the kids taken away by Child Protective Services. And we lost our apartment for having police activity at the apartment. And then you're back outside. So I was back outside. And, and very depressed. Didn't know what to do. So I was gonna kill myself with heroin. And at that moment, I had ended up meeting a girl that I was interested in and she was a heroin addict. And um, Funny how that works. It was very strange. And God had other plans. He wanted me to get strung out to see what real suffering was, I guess. Because you said you're still still doing fentanyl. I'm doing fentanyl right now, yeah. Which and is crystal extremely meth. dangerous. Yes. They're talking about that. Yeah. I have so many friends that aren't here anymore. Or there's another dog coming. <laughs> <laughs> Behave dog. <laughs> Both of yours. Um, um, so you're still using? Yes. And it's hard to do homeless sober? It's very. And I, I tried uh, talking to Path to get into a shelter, and they told me that. Um, they're all like quarantined right now because people keep coming up positive for COVID-19. So it's just making it really, really difficult to do anything, you know? Where'd you sleep last night? I uh, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit out that section because you said where you slept and I don't want that public and with your permission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've never edited one of these videos, but I wanna make sure because I promise you it won't be edited. Right. So I want to make sure it's your permission, but of your course. safety is more important. Right. But you slept on the sidewalk downtown. Right. Um, what's that like? It's crazy. Somebody the other morning let their dog piss on me. I woke up completely like soaked on my back. And the way I was laying, I was laying on top of my dog's um, leash. So he couldn't really move. And he was on the inside of me and I was pissed on on my back behind me so people don't have any respect for homeless at all oh my God. which I I understand kind of because some homeless just don't have respect for anything or anybody you know Many, but it doesn't give them the right to do things like that no I, I agree and most people don't understand a lot of people are going through trauma or a past life like you and you know it's it's no excuse to not or to disrespect people and you know when you have mental illness and drug addiction the normal exactly. rules do, don't apply but we need to help all homeless people right yeah. so how do you survive out here uh, i hold a sign uh to make money uh, my sign yeah my sign just says uh please help me and my buddy boy and then I have buddy boy in quotations. And the O on boy is a paw print. Yeah. And oh, wow. people, people uh, really like it, you know? Because yeah. I'm not asking anybody for money. It's, it's, people don't understand how degrading flying a sign is. Right. And a lot of people that I've met that have given me money or food or clothes or anything, you know, they say that they've been in this position before themselves, oh, wow. you know? Wow, wow, wow. So, um, oh my gosh, uh, people don't understand how hard it is to get off heroin or fentanyl or meth. It's extremely difficult, especially I know, with the opiates. Yeah, I know when I was out here, I needed drugs more than I needed air. Right. It took over my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't just snap a finger and say, I, I quit. Exactly, and you can't do it for anybody. You have to do it for yourself, you know? You have and to actually want it. Like, I want to be sober, but apparently I don't want it enough, you know? Apparently I still have more to go through. Well, but you're also outside. Right. You're going to the bathroom outside. 
Exactly. You don't have yeah, any Because nobody security. wants to let anybody go inside and use the restroom at yeah. any of these stores or restaurants. No, I, you know? you're going to the bathroom outside. There's no, you're sleeping on a sidewalk. Right. And people are judging you for everything using, I own and carry it on my back. Yeah. You know? People are judging you for using drugs. Oh right. my gosh. I mean, the, the soccer mom's, you know, hitting the bottle. The lawyer's toking the pipe, you know. Postman's taking a couple of pills to make the rounds, you know, exactly. homeless people. And I'm not justifying addiction. I'm just saying, let's put it in perspective and get people the help they need. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of judging them and making them feel bad about it, yeah. you know? Um, what would you want people to know? Uh, like, you know, the people walking by, the people driving by, the house people. The, well, what about homelessness? Um, that it's extremely difficult out here that you don't know if you're going to be attacked while you're sleeping or robbed you know i've been robbed and attacked so many times it's it's crazy to think about you know um and also that i've had a normal life just like them you know that i'm no different than they are you know i just had been dealt with wrong cards you know yeah and you need help to get on your feet and right get back to a normal life whatever that is these yeah days. I'm 32 now and I've been on and off the streets since I was 17 since 2006 you know it's a long time. so it's like I don't know anything else really I don't know how to get back on my feet really um if you had three wishes what would they be um, a house or an apartment, somewhere to be comfortable. I don't care if I ha have a car or anything like that. Um, good health for my dog. Um, and everybody to be a little bit more respectful towards the homeless community. Great wishes. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you.